Greetings, friends of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you into the inner sanctum for another visit with your favorite character. We're back again with a familiar subject. Murder. Ever want to find out how scared you can get? Hmm. Well, suppose you hang around for a while. And when the show's over, I'll cut you down. <laughs> All right. Suppose we get down to brass tacks. And I do mean the ones that go around the edge of a coffin. In a tiny cottage lost in a wild, desolate section of rural New England... Ellen Richards sits in a chair, listening. Approaching 60, white-haired, with eyes that dance nervously in the firelight, she listens. She hears the winds weeping and moaning, grim heralds of the bleak winter. But she listens for something else. Gregory! Is it you? Where are you? Upstairs? Gregory? Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's nonsense. That's all. It's nonsense. It's just because I'm alone. Gregory! <laughs> you, you wouldn't do this to me if I weren't alone. Hello, operator. Hello, what's the matter with you? Number, please. Hello, operator. I want you to ring my nephew, Leslie Richards. Tell him to come home at once. Number, please. My nephew, Leslie, I told you. What's the matter with you? Don't you understand? You must hurry. I beg your pardon. What number do you wish to call? Number? Number? Oh, he's in town somewhere. The depot. Call him at the depot. Oh, don't you understand? I hear the boots. So heavy. Hard little boots. And the cane tapping. It's my husband. He's coming up out of the cellar step by step. And he's been dead for five years. And now he's on the landing. And now he's opening the door. And now... Ah! Hello, oh, Leslie. Oh, Hello, Andy. Oh, oh, Leslie, you darling, darling boy. Oh, it's you. It's you. And not the other. Really, Andy, I don't quite understand. <laughs> you dear boy, you must forgive me. I'm hysterical. Let's be patient with me, I... I'll be all right in a minute. What's wrong? What happened? Let me hold your hand. Oh, just knowing that you're here makes me feel better already. I thought I'd go out of my mind. Oh, you poor mm. darling. Now, if you'll only tell me oh, what wait happened. Wait a moment. Do you hear anything? Just the wind? That's all? That's all. Oh, Leslie, you mustn't leave me alone ever again. I simply can't bear to be alone. But I just drove to the station to get Miss Morrow. Darling, you're in a terrible state. You really must sit down. I'll get you. No, no, no. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Where's Miss Morrow now? She went through the side entrance in her room, I guess. I think I'm going to discharge that girl. Why? Oh, I don't know. I feel she doesn't belong here. I don't like strangers about it. Really, Auntie, you're being silly. You can't bear being alone, and now you want to discharge your companion. Well, you're here now. But I can't be with you all the time. Leslie. But you almost never leave the house, and someone must go out to get things done once in a while. Oh, oh yes, I suppose you're right. And it won't do you a bit of harm to go out once in a while, too. The movies in town, or maybe New York for the theater. No, no, no. But, Ellen. Don't you dare suggest that again. You must never suggest that again, do you hear? But why? Why must you stay here locked up in this house? Because... Because ever since my husband disappeared, I vowed... Oh, what the use? You wouldn't understand. I think I would. Oh, no, no. You're young and handsome and charming, and there's no use troubling you with all that. Yeah. I feel ever so much better already. No, oh, dear Leslie, you don't know what you've done for me. Really? It was horrible living here with just Miss Morrow until... You were sweet enough to come and stay with a poor, lonely old lady. I know it must be trying for you. It's really lots of fun. I'm having a fine time. 
And that talk of your being an old lady is just nonsense. Why, if Uncle Gregory were here and could see you now, he'd fall in love and marry you all over again. Why do you say that? Just to make you laugh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're very flattering. <laughs> See, you're laughing. That's better. Leslie, you you won't go away ever, will you? What an idea. You're my only living relative. I'll remember your kindness when I'm gone. You'll be wealthy, very wealthy. Here, now, what kind of talk is this when you're gone indeed? Why, we're going to have grand times here forever and ever. Now, you go to bed and sleep away all that foolishness. And here's a kiss for a pleasant dream. Mm. <laughs> oh, you silly, silly boy. <laughs> well, say good night to Miss Morrow for me. I'm too tired to wait. Good night. Barbara? Come in. Barbara. Don't tell me about it. Don't say anything. Just just kiss me and hold me tight. Oh, dear. <sighs> Oh, Leslie, I could hardly bring myself to come back here tonight. She's so hateful and cruel. Barbara, don't. She may hear you. I'm sorry, but how much more of this do you think I can stand? This house will drive me as mad as she is. Please, dearest. All right, all right. It all seems so senseless. You say you love me and yet... You know I haven't any money, but I'll get some. I'll get a great deal, and as soon as I do... What I want to know is when. When? Tonight. Perhaps. Gregory? No, no, go away. Leslie? Leslie, come here at once. Leslie! Penny, I heard you call. What is it? Listen, listen. Do you hear it? Yes. Oh, thank heaven I'm not the only one. What is it? It's Gregory. Oh, no, I... I know it. That's the way he used to walk around the house, chatting with his kids. No, that's not... But I know. I heard it before while I was alone. He's come back somehow. Oh, Leslie, he's come back. Then why should he do this? If it's Uncle Gregory come back, why, he'd come right in the front door. But don't you see? He can't. He's been dead these five years. Dead. You told me he disappeared. I know. I know. I, I didn't want to shock you. I... Oh, Leslie, how much can I trust you? Trust me? Why, Auntie, you know there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. Anna, listen. Where is it coming from? The living room. Give me my robe. Yeah, but I don't see why you must get out of bed. I must know about this. I can't leave this house, Leslie, and if he's here... Why can't you leave it? You can sell it and go away. You don't understand. Yes, the living room. We're going in there. I'm not afraid to face anything if you're with me. Now, come. Very well. Do you see anything? There's nothing in the corridor. But I can hear it. It's closer. There's the living room. Not a soul there. Not a soul? Why'd you pick up that fireplace iron? You'll know in a moment. Can you move the piano? These old uprights are pretty heavy, but I think I can do it. There. And get that little shovel from the fireplace. Hurry! I say, I don't understand. What are you doing there? What is it? Some kind of secret trap door on the floor you're trying to move with that iron? Yes. It's the floor. Oh, oh here, let me do it. All right. I think I have it now. There's nothing but dirt under there. Use the shovel. Very well. Leslie, I don't know. Listen. The tapping is stopped. Yes. Why? Perhaps this is why. Perhaps he wanted me to find his body. He's still there? Look. <laughs> Gregory! So that's why you never left this house, isn't it? He was lying here all this time. 
lying here where you buried him. After you murdered him. Isn't that so? <laughs> now, who is bleeding last? Oh, yes. Auntie Ellen, the old darling, just had her nephew dig up her husband from under the floor. If you think she kept him there to make him stay home night, you're wrong. He'd been murdered. And Auntie Ellen's nephew just accused her of killing him. Yes. Yes, I killed him. Leslie, you mustn't tell anybody. I know you won't tell. Oh, it's been horrible living all these years with him right in the same house. I could never leave someone might find him, you see. And every time I heard a noise in the house, oh, it was frightful. I should think so. That's why I sent for you. I couldn't bear it alone. Now you know my secret, and you will help me. Will I? Of course, dear Leslie. I know you will, and... Won't you? Oh, it's Miss Morrow. Don't get her screwed. Quite all right, Auntie Ellen. Come in, Barbara. No, no, you can't. I've heard everything, Mrs. Richards. And I know everything. You know? You and Leslie. It was you who made those noises, that tapping. It didn't start until after you came. Yes, Auntie Ellen. You horrid boy, why did you? How could you do this to me after everything I've done for you? I, I thought you loved me. I thought... Sit down. No, I, I will not. I... <laughs> Sit down, I said. Barbara, get a checkbook. Okay. What are you going to do? Dear Auntie Ellen, you are going to write a check for $50,000. For you? For me. The book and the pen. I see it all now. What a fool I've been, taking the two of you into my home. And now you do this to me just to get my money. You killed him for that money. You have no right to talk. You made him do this. Leslie's a good boy. You found out about this and you put him up to it. I'm going to call the police. You're a little thief. You are a murderer, Auntie Ellen. You won't call any police. In fact, you'll tell no one. And you'll write that check now. Leslie? Yes. You're quite right. I, I'm not in a very good position, am I? You hurt me deeply, Leslie. After I trusted you, after I... Leslie, what happened to her? I don't know. She just stood up and collapsed. Annie. Annie Ellen. Is she dead? No, she's still breathing. But she's paralyzed, stiff as a board. Father, call a doctor. I'll fix that floor and push the piano back. You think it's safe? Absolutely. She won't say a word if she comes out of it. And if she does tell about the check, who will believe her? It'll be our word against the murderers. Come on, Barbara. We've got to get her well enough to write that check. <laughs> Mrs. Richards, if you can understand what I'm saying, blink your eyes. Ah, thank you. Well, Dr. Walsh? Well, I can't give you a final opinion yet, young man. She seems to know what we're saying. Was it a stroke? Possibly. We won't know until I can take some x-rays. It may be simple hysterical paralysis. Doctor, I'd, I'd like to know if... If there's any danger. Danger? Mm, yes and no. Patients have sometimes lived for years after a stroke. Well, I'm going to call in a specialist for consultation. And uh, I'll be back in the morning with x-ray equipment. Uh, meanwhile, don't move her from that chair. Yes, Dr. Ward. It was very kind of you to come so quickly. Mrs. Richards is an old friend of mine. Call me at once if she seems to get worse. I certainly will. Good night. Good night. Leslie. Oh, rotten luck, isn't it? Just when we had... Hello. She seems to be smiling. Oh, be careful. She can understand everything you say. I know. And let her. Let her. You won't get away with it, Auntie. We still have you, you know. The will. You forgot about that will. You can't make a new one now. You can't write. And we know your secret. 
Yes, Auntie, we still have you. No, Leslie. She has us. What are you talking about? You heard what the doctor said. It may be years. We can wait. Can we? Wait here, taking care of her, waiting for her to die? You imagine what that'll be like? Well, maybe you can wait. I can't. Barbara, you must What's the use, Leslie? You waited all this time and you see what happened. We're worse off than we were before. Now, Barbara, you mustn't lose your head. There may be something we can do. What can we do? We can... Yes, Leslie? She got away with it. Why can't we? Murder. Yes. I've even thought of a plan. Have you? We can both be away, far away from here in South America, perhaps, when this house can catch fire. An invalid, unable to move, it can be arranged, you know. Yes. Yes, it can be arranged. But are you sure of this will? Certainly. She told me about it a dozen times. Have you seen it? No, but I know. You can't believe what she tells you. You better look. You must be sure of all this. You're quite right. I'm almost certain the will is in her room. I'll find it. You'll see that I'm right. Did you say something, Mrs. Richards? I thought I heard you say something. Why are you looking at me that way? Mrs. Richards, I'm not afraid. I don't care if you heard everything. I'm not afraid of you anymore. You and your orders. Nothing I did was ever good enough for you, was it? Always telling me I was too common, too cheap for you. Well, I found out what you were tonight. Stop your staring at me. You want to know something, Mrs. Richards? He didn't figure this out himself. I was the one who was smart enough for that. I kept wondering why you never left this house. Why your husband disappeared. And I told Leslie. You stop your staring at me! Barbara, what is it? I heard you scream. I... I... It's nothing. It's nothing at all. Have you found it? No, not yet, but it's around somewhere. I'm sure of it. Do you want it? No. No. I'll find it in a minute, I'm sure. Mrs. Richards. The chair. The chair has moved. You moved it while my back was turned while I was talking to Leslie, didn't you? Didn't you? The hand iron from the fireplace. There, a minute ago. Did you take it? Did you? Near enough to rip. No! Don't! Don't! <laughs> I found it. She left me everything. Barbara, what happened to you? Andy Ellen, where are you? I'm standing behind you, Leslie. What? Don't move. But Barbara... She's dead. I killed her. I have the andiron here in my hand. Don't move. Andy, now please. Stay on your knees. Just where you are. Very well. If you wish. But... You were very anxious to find out what happened to my husband. Now you shall know everything. In fact, you shall know precisely because the same thing is going to happen to you. You see, I use this very same instrument, this poker. You and she will share his grave. It's an awesome, silly joke, isn't it? You, you can't do this to me. You know that I love you. Don't move. But don't you see, Auntie? Simon, say, put that thing down. You don't know what you're doing. Don't... Don't... Hello. I'm sorry to disturb you, Dr. Walsh. This is Ellen Richards. Ellen Richards? <laughs> I knew you'd be surprised, but I've fully recovered. You were quite right when you thought it was hysterical paralysis. Well, I thought so all along, but uh, naturally I wouldn't venture an opinion without an expert. But uh, why did it happen? Oh, it was a silly thing, I suppose, but my nephew Leslie told me he was going to marry Miss Morrow. In fact, they planned to elope. And uh, that was the shock that brought it on? Yes, Dr. Walsh. I, I suppose I let myself care for my nephew more than I should. Yes, yes, I understand. But I'm quite over it now. I sent them on with my blessing. They drove into New York, and they're sailing for South America in a few days. So you needn't come tomorrow evening. All right, Ellen. But your nerves must be in bad shape. You better let me give you a checkup. 
Very well, Doctor. I'll come to your house the day after tomorrow. Good night. Good night. <laughs> That completes my checkup. And what's the verdict? <laughs> You've got a constitution like iron. <laughs> You'll live to at least 110. Oh, but Ellen, you have to get out of your house. No, now don't go into that again, Dr. Walsh. When Gregory disappeared, I made up my mind I would never leave, and I mean to stick to that vow. That's not what I meant, Ellen. Haven't you heard the news? What news? The new superhighway. It's going to be built right through your property. Uh, your house is dead center of the roadway. They'll have to rip it down. What? Well, they can't do it. I won't let them. Well, there's no reason to be alarmed. You realize a handsome profit for your property. When will these people be around? When are they coming? Why, the surveyors are in the neighborhood now. They may be calling at your house today uh, to examine the property and make an estimate of its value. Today? Well, I'm not... I must get back to the house immediately. I I don't want them to come when I'm not there. Oh, excuse me. Mm. Hello. Yes. Yes, one moment. It's for you, Ellen. For me? Who is it? Why, I believe the man said the state police. But what could they possibly want with you, Ellen? Auntie Ellen's relatives and friends are now all stone cold dead in the parlor. She bashes nobody's head but her husband's, her nephews, and his girlfriend. <laughs> and we leave this electric personality while she's on her way to becoming a short circuit. <laughs> of course, we don't want to alarm you, but... Uh, Crimes like these don't happen except to people like you and you. But not you. Well, friends, it's time once again to close that creaking door. Until next week at the same time when we'll be back with a little hunk of horror. <laughs> You'll be sure to listen, won't you? Until next week, then. Good night. Pleasant Sanctum has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>